average earnings of those employed within Wirral are now the second lowest of all Merseyside districts. By contrast, the average earning of residents, including those who commute outside of the boundary, are the second highest in Merseyside and above the Merseyside average. Half of the retail spending by Wirral residents stays in Wirral, that report found. That means an estimated net £80 million retail spending would be lost from the Wirral per annum should the tolls be removed. And that estimated the equivalent of about 600 retail jobs would be lost as a result. Analysis of business startups shows that in 2012 the rate of establishing new businesses in the Wirral was the second highest in Merseyside. And the survival rates of new business in Wirral are also the second highest in Merseyside during the years 2011 and 2012. And Wirral itself has the highest survival rates of all districts over a five year period between the years 2007 to 2012. In that, in that commission, we actually carried out a survey of Wirral businesses and, and interesting feedback from that survey. Wirral businesses do not perceive location issues any differently to other Merseyside based businesses. Wirral businesses do cite the tunnel tolls as having an impact on overall transport costs, but no more highly than congestion issues and not as significant as fuel costs to those businesses. And less than 20% of Wirral businesses <coughs> view the tolls as a barrier to doing business across the river but more than 60% perceived no transport barriers at all, which indicates that the majority didn't recognise tunnel tolls as being a barrier. In, request, in respect of the second motion, again, if I may read it for the audience, Council recognises such increases place a greater strain on tunnel users who have to travel to and from where, placing an unfair tax burden on middle residents. If I may point out to members, the statement tax in this context is defined as a compulsory contribution to state revenue levied by the government on workers' income and business profits or added to contributions to the cost of some goods, services and transactions. The funding mechanism of the Mersey Tunnels is very different from a tax regime in that the user pays for a service. The service is not compulsory. There are other modes of cross-river travel and road links in existence, for example, rail, the uh, Runcorn Bridge and the Mersey Ferries. There is an element therefore of choice for the motorist as to whether or not they use that service. Survey data indicates that 88,000 rural residents, approximately 25% of the rural population, drive a car as their main method of getting to and from work. Based on existing traffic data, an estimated 15,000 of these residents use the tunnel on a daily basis to Members should also be aware that survey data indicates the following journey start locations for the use of Mersey tunnels. So in effect, where our users live. Wirral contributes 36.5% of our traffic. Liverpool, 28.4%. Sefton, 9.2%. Knowsley, 1.1%. St Helens, 1%. And other areas outside of Merseyside, a total of 23.8%. This means that just under two thirds of all tunnel journeys start from outside the Wirral area, with a greater volume actually starting in other Merseyside districts combined. Thirdly, in terms of the notion, uh, Council recognises discount toll schemes and free crossings for local residents have already exist in other parts of the country. And whilst recognising fast tag users benefit from a discount, Council believes that regular users should be rewarded with a local discount scheme over and above that afforded by the use of the fast tag, such as that announced for the Mersey Gateway Bridge of a local use discount scheme with up to 300 journeys per year. Officers feel it is inappropriate to compare the Mersey Gateway scheme with the Mersey Tunnels. The funding mechanism for the construction and operation of the Mersey Gateway is completely different to that for the tunnels and the ongoing maintenance costs will be significantly lower for the Mersey Gateway on the basis that it's a bridge, not a tunnel. For example, lighting, ventilation, pumping equipment are significant costs in terms of maintenance 
upgrade and renewal as required. The Mersey Gateway is within one council area and as a consequence the discount is part of the approach to project funding. And if you consider the regular user of the Mersey Tunnels will commute to and from work, working five days per week, four weeks holiday per annum, they will travel approximately 480 times per year. If the proposal is to then allocate 300 free journeys per annum, then this equates to 62.5% of all journeys from Merseyside residents becoming free. So, assuming the usual volumes are approximately 25 million journeys per annum, 76% of which are made by Merseyside residents, that's over 19 million journeys per annum, of which 62.5% will become free. This equates to a discount proposed of approximately 19 million pounds per annum. Such an approach would mean the existing tunnel's revenue budget would require support from the levy in order to continue to operate at existing levels, in which case the funding, the current funding model for the user pays transfers to all residents of Merseyside paying the subsidy through their council tax. Our current discounts, including the reducing the authorised toll level, operating a fast tag team and operating a tunnel concession equates to £15.8 million per annum. Fast tag offers a user's discount of 17%, but is only used by 35% of all journeys and equates that discount equates to just over £3 million per annum. A further £6 million additional discount is available to users should they wish to take that discount up, but choose not to. Our disability concession scheme allocates a total of just over £2.5 million free journeys per annum and eligible to certain members of our community. Again, not all free journeys are used, but they are allocated and could potentially be used. And finally, in setting the tolls, the ITA have not approved the full authorised toll levels and again implemented a discount against actual toll levels. And the value of that discount equates to £2.6 million pounds per annum, and all of that adds up to the £15.8 million that I referred to earlier. The current budget set anticipates discount uptake to remain as it is, but the potential exists for an estimated £8 million plus to be lost in income should all discounts be utilised by users. Members should also be aware that in generating a surplus in revenue, that surplus is reinvested in local transport provision on Merseyside, of which Wirral is a significant benefactor. For example, Wirral has the highest number of Mersey rail stations across Merseyside, 24 in total, and I've seen some major schemes progressed over the last three years. And if I may just refer to some of those schemes, park and ride improvements at Bidston Moss and Birkenhead North in excess of £3 million funding, a new footbridge lift at Birkenhead North Station, again in excess of £3 million funding, cladding in the Queensway Tunnel itself, £7.5 million pounds worth of funding and there's a range of other schemes that we've made reference to that indicates a spending in excess of £17 million pounds over the last three years benefiting will wider transport related matters. <coughs> Finally, Chair, in the motion references passed the request for the Mersey Tunnels to be transferred into the National Road Network. Such a request was made at the ITA meeting in January 2013 and if I may, I'll read the response that we received from the Department for Transport at that time. And a paragraph of that response reads, You asked specifically about the government's current thinking on the integration of the Mersey tunnels into the National Road Network. The answer to this is very simple. There is no such thinking since the government is not contemplating any change to the current position which the tunnels are a vital part of the local transport infrastructure and are best managed at a local level. Happy to take any questions if the members feel it useful. Anybody would like to raise? Yeah, oh, that idea. Yeah. Is it, um, you talk about some of the capital benefits that, that Will has been in receipt of, the overall budget of, of Mersey Capital or ITA, whatever our name is at the moment. Um, uh, 
And really, yeah, just, just, just to highlight a couple of the other revenue issues, we recently received a grant um, as part of this year's budget settlement, which, which was up on ring test. I, I'm not sure the exact figure. And can you tell me whether it's a fact that the levy has been frozen for the last number of years? I don't know how many years the levy that we pay towards this from has been frozen. So there are, if you like, revenue benefits coming back as well as council. Yes, council, I can confirm in fact for the past at least two years the levy has been frozen and it's going to be frozen moving into to, to this current financial year. Uh, I couldn't confirm without reference back of, of, of any longer periods than that. Uh, and, and I certainly think in, in terms of the longer term financial strategy that's, that's been through the ITA, the commitment is to try and recognise the financial difficulties all the district authorities are going through in effect contribute as best we can towards the revenue issues. In terms of the grant we received the highways grant back this year. I'll, I'll pick that up with the please councillor. There's a sum of 3.3 million pounds that was returned last year that will be a further 3.3 million on top of that this year to give a huge total of 6.6 and another 3.3 
into where all of those the percentages of the metal is starting to fall.
also picked up a few of research is the majority of people with the other past that are just one more frequent users. And that's not the case and actually there's a sort of marketing campaign and to start next week which actually starts to promote the actual discount levels for any users. So hopefully we'll see that take up increase. When we do some comparative benchmarks with other total crossings across the country, our actual usage of 35% of tax is the highest in the country.